Hi guys and welcome to this training session where we're going to explore the range of different TRV heads that are available from Drayton along with their features and benefits. The purpose of a TRV is to control the output from a radiator in order to strike a balance between energy efficiency and maintaining a comfort level. The traditional TRVs are mechanical and therefore fit and forget products as they require no maintenance, for instance the need to change batteries. In fact, fitting TRVs to a heating installation is one of the most cost-effective measures you can take in order to improve your efficiency, and so provide the greatest return on investment. According to statistics from Beamer, correctly installed and operated TRVs can see an energy saving of 19%, so this is certainly a worthwhile pursuit to have these fitted to your heating system. And these are the three ranges of thermostatic radiator valve that Drayton manufacture. And we'll start by having a closer look at the RT212. So this is our entry level range where price point is key. And you can see it comes in the standard packs of 15 mil angled and straight. Also uh, paired up with lock shields and there is a 10 millimeter option. The key difference between this and the RT414 is that this is supplied with our fixed flow rate body. So from a balancing point of view, you're going to be balancing using the lock shields, whereas the RT414 has the EB body, which is also supplied with the TRV4. This is something that I cover in detail in section 4 of this module. Now, whilst this is our entry level head, it is by no means lacking in features and functionality. And following a recent design overhaul, this now includes a liquid sensing element far superior to its predecessor, the wax insert. Now, you can see there's a frost position, which is around about seven degrees. And then you have a full one to six from around about 12 degrees right up to 29. And importantly, it's got the key mark symbol there, which shows that it's accredited to BSEN 215. Now, there is also a positive off. So if you continue to turn past the frost protection, you can get to the zero, which is a positive off. We would still recommend using a decorator cap if you're going to want to remove the radiator. So if we flip it over and have a look underneath, we've got the vents where the air enters, but these also double as being slots for you to be able to insert your range limiting pin. And you see we have two pins here. The flush one, that's what holds the head together, so you don't remove that one. But the other one with the hook on it, that one can be removed and repositioned into one of the other slots. And you can remove that by getting a screwdriver in there, or I tend to use these flush cutting pliers just so that I can grip underneath and then lever the pin out. So now to the range limiting. So if we start with the head set on zero and then insert the pin into the slot that we want, you can see they're all numbered underneath there. So just lift the locking ring to give you some clearance and then you can get the pin in. Now when we try and turn the cap, we're limited to between zero and where we've pinned it, which is just before position three. Now, if we wanted to go the other way and stop it being set too low, we can remove the pin exactly the same as we did before, but this time start from position six, so wide open essentially on the highest setting. Now, when we reinsert the pin, again, lift the locking ring to give you some clearance, insert the pin and just push it home flush. Now we are range limited between maximum and where we've pinned, in this case, just above three. So you can see you can limit in either direction. Moving now to our mid-range, the RT414. This also has a liquid sensing element, but critically, these are supplied with the Drayton EB valve body, which is the one that allows you to replace gland seals, but also balance your system on the TRV. As you would expect, as well as sensing head only, these are also supplied in packs to suit 15 mil compression, both angled and straight. And there are also packs that include the respective lock shields. So the first key difference between this and the RT212 is the more ergonomic cap. 
We've got a setting range again from frost, which will be around about seven degrees, right up to six, which will be around about 30 degrees. And like the RT212, you've also got the positive off. So if you want the radio to be off, you can set it to zero and that will prevent flow. Now, if we do a side by side of the RT414 on the left and the RT212 on the right, you can see that they share the same bezel, which is the bottom piece that has the locking ring. And therefore, the RT414 has exactly the same range limiting capabilities as the RT212. Remove the pin and then reinsert it into any one of the slots. Now you'll also notice if you turn it to maximum, we've again got that key mark, which means that it's BSEN215 accredited. And so we come to our range topping TRV4, probably the product that Drayton is best known for. There are four variants here. On the left, we've got the all white, where the adjusting cap matches the bezel. Then in the middle, the TRV4 Classic, which is a white bezel with a chrome setting cap. Now, if you've got towel radiators, particularly chrome towel radiators in the bathroom, the or chrome version of the TRV4 is very popular. And then for designer radiators, the latest addition to the lineup is the TRV4 Anthracite. So here I have a TRV4 Classic head that we can have a closer look at. And there is no positive off on these, so your minimum setting position is the frost position. And again, that will be around about 7 degrees but you can then set anything from frost right up to position maximum. And to aid ease of setting, we've got a fading scale tape as well as click stops on each half increment. And as I said before, there's no positive off, so all TRV4s are supplied with a decorator's cap should you wish to remove the radiator. And if we take a look underneath, you can see we've got our range limiting pin and also some holes where we can insert that pin to limit the extent of the travel of the setting cap. Now there are two pins here. The flush one is the one that holds the head together. So if you take that out, it will disassemble. But the one that we will move is the one that's not quite flush, the one that just sticks out a little bit. And starting from the position that we want to range limit from, in this case, we're starting at frost. We can use our flush cutting pliers just to grab hold of that pin. You can also use a screwdriver, but this sort of thing gives you a little bit more control. So extract the pin, and then the pin can be replaced into the appropriate hole, depending on what level of range limiting you require. So we've now limited this from the frost position up to position four, and it won't go any further. And to remove the range limiting, it's just a matter of extracting that pin. Now this time, we're going to limit it from the upper level. So we're gonna make it so that the head can't be set lower than our desired setting. So we start off at maximum, insert the pin, and we can see now that we can't now get past position four. If we want to lock the setting cap in a fixed position, thereby removing the ability to be able to make changes, we can do that using a second range limiting pin, and we pin in the adjacent hole to where the original pin was, and you can see now that the head is now fixed onto position four, we can't make any changes. And as you would expect from a flagship product, our TRV4 has class one energy rating from the TEL thermostatic efficiency labeling scheme, which labels controls like this in much the same way that you would see for domestic appliances, rated from class one right through to class six. Now, the key factor for these devices to work efficiently is they need to have a good airflow through them. Now, the way this works is if we have a look at the bottom of the RT212, as well as those hose being for range limiting, they're also a vent to allow the air to move into the head and then it escapes through the vents in the top. Same with the RT414. So we know it shares the same bezel, so the air goes in through the bottom and it comes out the vents at the top. As part of the elegant design of the TRV4, there is no grill on the cap. Instead, the air goes in at the bottom through the vent and the gap between the cap and the bezel is the vent where the air comes through. So that's how we get airflow through this sensing head. So now let's have a look inside one of these and see how they're put together. Now, I mentioned before that that flush pin is what holds the head together. 
So if we remove that, the cap will be free to completely unscrew from the bezel. And inside we find our cap, which houses the liquid sensing element. So that's got the grease on it so that the threads don't bind up with the bezel. So that houses this sensing element. And if we have a look inside, you can see that's the bit that expands. And that's what pushes the internal pin of the head down, which in turn will press on the valve body pin. Next, we have that internal pin. And you can see that that fits up inside so that that's how the actuation occurs. And then the other end of that pin sits in to the bottom of the bezel. And then the locking ring is what will hold it onto the valve body. And it's a similar story with the TRV4. The first thing is that the pins, all the range limiting pins, remember this is when we had pinned up with two, they get removed. And then if that flush pin gets removed, that will then allow the head to be turned all the way anti-clockwise, which will cause it to unscrew. And they're not easy to get out that flush pin because we don't want the customer to be able to do this. But now you can see that's what will allow the sensing element to detach from the bezel. And you just end up with two pieces. The bezel, which has got the locking ring on, and then the actual sensing head assembly, which has got the pin, which moves up and down, depending on what the temperature is. Now we also have a couple of solutions for remote sensing. So this is where you want to remove the sensing away from the heat source. So imagine if this radiator was in a radiator cabinet, we want it to respond to the temperature outside of that, not what's going on inside. So this is our, our TRV4 with remote sensor. So you screw that onto the valve body and then you've got this bulb which fits inside a casing which can then be screwed somewhere externally, usually to the wall or the skirting board. And this capillary is a tube carrying liquid, so it can't be cut and it can't be bent at too acute an angle. So you need to make sure that once you've got it in its final location, if you need to shorten it, it just needs to be coiled up in gentle coils and stored discreetly. Now we also have another solution for remote sensing, and this is where you not only want the sensing to be remote, but you want to also be able to set the comfort setting remotely. So here, this is an ETF kit, and this gets installed between the valve body and the sensing head. So one end screws on to the valve body in place of a standard sensing head, and then on the other end, you've got a terminal that you can fit a standard sensing head to. It screws to the wall, and then you screw on the sensing head, so not only will it sense from that location, but you've still got access to make changes. And here's a quick rundown of the types of packs that you get where the head is included with a valve body. Uh, I'll be covering this more in more detail in section two, but everything from the TRV4 white right through to anthracite can be spec'd with a valve body. And so to some of the accessories, you can get the extra range limiting pin if you want to pin the TRV4 in a fixed position. There are also decorator caps, both chrome and white. You can also get a wheel head, should you wish to not have thermostatic control of the valve body, the ETF kit, and also if you're fitting TRV4s in communal areas, it may be desirable to put the tamper guard over the top because not only does this prevent them from being changed in terms of their setting, it also prevents the locking ring from being accessed so that they can't be removed. More information on this can be found on our website where you can download a PDF version of our product catalogue which covers all of the valve bodies that we'll see in session two as well as the accessories you see here. And just for fun to finish off with we'll have a look at the evolution of the TRV4. So here we have a TRV1. Now this is also really going to be useful if you need to identify these. So the TRV1 if you turn it down to minimum you get the S symbol. And also, if you turn to maximum, it should go up to number eight. So if you're trying to identify what valve you've got, and it's got S to eight and a screw in the back of it, it's a TRV1. If you've got these, you're going to need to replace everything to upgrade. Nothing will fit that old valve body. 
Moving on to the second generation, the TRV2. Now this is identifiable because we now started in to include some red on the scale tape. You can see the band gets wider as you move from frost all the way again up to position eight. So if it has a screw in the back of it and the number eight is in red, it's a TRV2. Now as with the TRV1, if you've got either of these and you need replacement heads, you're gonna have to swap out the valve bodies also. Now the TRV3, the identifying feature here, again, it goes from frost all the way up. This time, instead of going to eight, it goes to maximum. So the maximum is in red. But the key feature here are the screw on the back, but it's also got the black fins at the bottom. So if you've got black fins, it's a TRV3. You can replace this with the TRV4C, which is the conversion head. So you don't need to replace the valve body. Thanks for watching this training video. And if you need any more information or resources, head over to our website, DraytonControls.co.uk